All right. We're happy to see you all here today. So as we think about this phrase, run the race, I want to challenge you to think about this Bible verse. Sometimes in life, we can have the tendency to be very busy. Sometimes we're busy, sometimes we're not. But at times, it can seem that we are extremely busy. Recently, with my daughter getting married, it has been, oh goodness, quite crazy. Just details here and there and, you know, making flowers and, oh, setting up different things. The list just goes on and on. Many, many late nights were involved. And... There's the wedding, but also um, my three boys are in baseball, so we're constantly shuttling them to games and practices, and so we have the wedding busyness and that, and also we have decided to put in a new floor in our house, so it was not a good idea. As But as we're putting in the floor and doing baseball and doing the wedding, and we have family coming from out of town. It's just been so, so hectic. So as we've been completing everything, and the time has finally come to say goodbye to everyone and come to church, we're just spent. Just exhausted. You know, it's that you can't call in sick, but sometimes in life it gets really busy and you want to be able to do that. It really feels like the time with God just doesn't become an, it's not a priority anymore. And what should we do about that? So we'll think about that today. Hebrews. 12 verse 1 teaches that since we are surrounded by many witnesses which let's hold on that for a minute let's look at this right here the word witnesses in this verse it means heroes from the Bible in chapter 11 Hebrews chapter 11 is um, about Moses and um, Daniel, Samson, all these different people from the Bible who God used in great ways. So with that group of people in mind who are now watching us, they are witnessing, they're watching us, what we're doing today. Let's Continuing with the first, it says, Let us rid of everything that keeps us from serving God, including sin, and let us run the race God has for us. Years ago, my dad was a runner, and he ran a race, and I would run with him sometimes, and often you know, behind, trying to keep up with him, but we would run. Sometimes we would go to an event, like at a park, and there would be a lot of people there, and we would run in a race together. But I noticed something. When you're in the group, of all the runners there. Everybody gets their shoes on. Everything's ready to go. But I never saw anyone get ready to run with a big old coat on or a backpack. Never. 
when you're ready to run, you take off all that excess clothing. You often wear very light clothing, maybe shorts. The shoes are very streamlined. They're not heavy so that you are better able to run. You won't get hot. You don't need that extra weight of clothing insulating you. In the same way, when we are to apply that phrase, the run the race, to the Christian life, it means as we're living life, we need to be moving forward. And sometimes we have sin baggage, as it were. There can be different struggles. Or um, maybe we have something that really eats up time and takes away from what we would spend with God. There are many, many different hindrances that we can have that make it hard to um, run the race of life. And we can't serve God effectively that way when we are so burdened and hindered. So Hebrews 12 teaches us that we need to take off those extra things that are preventing us from serving God. So this is our main point today. I can defeat discouragement by fixing my eyes on Jesus. Maybe when you get extremely busy, you feel very um, discouraged and that you cannot feel, you cannot serve God. Maybe you feel weighed down by your um, struggles of life. Um, maybe you have you feel you don't have enough money so that's um, a discouragement for you maybe no friends maybe you don't like your job so much so you get you begin to feel discouraged from whatever it is there are many different things that the satan uses many different avenues to get to us but the bible says that if we focus our eyes on jesus then we can defeat that discouragement. We won't continue to obsess about those things, but we'll be able to turn our attention to Jesus appropriately. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. It says we should fix our eyes on Jesus. That's a very important point that Jesus endured the cross and its shame. That was his race, his life goal. If you're running a race, you keep your eyes on the finish line. That's what you're looking for. And you keep going towards it. You're not looking around at sightseeing. We don't take the time for that. You keep running with a mission. It's to get to the finish line. So in the same way, Jesus lived his life with the goal of getting to the cross. Until it was the right time for him to die on the cross and rise again. So Jesus modeled that example for us of God giving a race to live. So each one of us has a um, a special plan designed by God for us to live. So we can't let disappointments and discouragements um, distract us from the path and miss out on God's plan. So the verse also says, Consider him so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. If we are focusing on Jesus, then it won't be as easy for us to get distracted. So we have point number one here. Jesus is the pioneer. What does that mean? What could this word mean here? Pioneer. Pioneer. 
Okay, it could be like an explorer. Do you remember Daniel Boone? He looked for a good place. He took him a long time. Even if it had a lot of trees, thick undergrowth, you know, he made his way through it, cleared a path to set up towns, houses, and he became famous as an explorer. So that's kind of like Christ is our, Jesus is our pioneer. He really helped us to figure out how to live. He gave us that model of um, how to deal with problems in life and how to overcome struggles, how to live successfully. Perfector of our faith as well. Again, Jesus showed us that example of how to live. As we focus our eyes on him, there are many things in life that can pop up. And we don't know what to do, how to handle them. But if we look to Jesus' example, then we will be able to learn from what he did and handle our um, problems and struggles. Number two, Jesus endured the cross. So we see this word endured here. Sometimes we as well have to endure things. And we must be faithful throughout it. Life is not easy every day. Sometimes it is very hard. So suppose Jesus had looked at the cross and said, no, that is too hard. It's too much. And I'm not going to do it. We would all be in trouble. So we need to thank Jesus for his willingness to endure that. And then learn from that model that we too can endure our daily struggles. Sometimes obeying God means that we will go into trials. But we must accept them and endure them. And God says that he will help lead us through them. And we can trust him on that. Here we have our last point. Jesus is sitting down. Jesus is sitting down. So why would we say that? Okay, so he's endured the cross, and that's done. He was buried, and he rose again, and it's done. That was the point of Jesus' life. That was his race. So now that that is completed, he has died and rose again and is in heaven, his work is done. And one day, our work will be done as well. Uh, we don't know when when we die that's when it will be done but we need to um, endure it while we are here and not quit we should persevere there are many Christians who quit for um, different reasons um, very often there are disagreements within church that people they're really insignificant but people quit the faith for it but we really need to persevere and remain faithful. So that's, and remember that God has a plan for us. So again, as we think about those truths, when we think about our own lives, And think about how God is looking down on us. 
does he see our faith? Does he see us enduring? Or does he see us discouraged? Does he see us weighed down with struggles? We should want God to be able to look down on us, running the race well, being faithful, moving along, not struggling, weighed down. If we're focused on things of this world, the world can be very depressing. So we need to keep our eyes on him. One last thought for you. Do you remember in the Bible where it talks about Peter and he's walking on the water? Do you remember that? So they're out in the boat and Peter looks over and sees Jesus walking across the water. And he calls out to him and it says, can I join you? And Jesus says, yes. So Peter, you know, steps out of the boat and is walking and all is well and he thinks it's really neat but the moment he gets discouraged he looks at the waves and he starts to feel as he's sinking down and then he cries out help me help me so why did he sink because he stopped looking at Jesus he took his eyes off of him and down he went if Peter had kept his focus he would have stayed on top of the water. So we too need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. It's all easy for all of us to get caught up in our troubles and struggles, but we need to put them aside and keep our eyes on Jesus. And Jesus is always there. It doesn't matter if you feel surrounded by problems. Just remember when Jesus was in the boat and Jesus was sleeping and his disciples looked out at the storm and the rain and they were all very scared and they ran to him and wake him up and said help us help us and Jesus didn't look worried at all he was just sleeping he's like okay so he you know stood up and calmed the storm and that was that In the same way, we have struggles, storms, as it were, in life. And he can calm them if we just look to him. But we have to decide to do that, to run the race, looking towards him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this message today. Help us to apply it. I know that I myself struggle with this discouragement sometimes as I get caught up in problems of life. Help us to decide to keep our eyes on you and not to become distracted with other problems. Help us to understand that if we look to you, we will be successful in the race you have us set to run. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.